A steam plant using a rebuilt Stuart 10 V steam engine. Part 7. Mounting the components on the baseboard using brass 4BA machine screws and making special fixings for mounting the engine. This video shows the techniques that I always use. I should really put the top tip time logo on for this one. I showed it in the previous video. I mark the positions for the holes by rotating the drill chuck complete with the twist drill to make a mark in the wood. Don't go straight in with the drill under power. Do it this way and you will get very good results. Go straight onto the baseboard with the twist drill under power and it's likely to skate about and you will not get very good results. I have to drill some 1 8 of an inch diameter holes in the baseboard. Four to mount the boiler on the baseboard and two to mount the steam engine on the baseboard. Normally I would plank a baseboard using mahogany planking, but this one's a bit different and a bit nicer in fact. It's one sheet of mahogany on the top over a base material which looks like it's MDF. Medium density fibre board. This is a bonus for what I'll be doing later after I've drilled and threaded the holes. Don't run the drill too fast and don't apply too much pressure. Give the drill bit time to penetrate the wood. In this opening sequence I'm showing the drilling of the holes in its entirety, unedited. Because I want you to see how slowly I'm drilling the holes, this makes for a much better job. If the drill's going really fast, you're much more prone to making mistakes. This is the box in which I keep my solitary 4BA tap in my smaller workshop. It's a good one though, and as far as I'm aware, it's made from high-speed steel. Which I don't really need for threading a baseboard, I just thought I'd mention it. Try and keep the 4BA tap vertical at all times. Don't put any side pressure on it, because remember, you're threading wood, and if you put any side pressure on the tap, you will get an enlarged hole. This part of the video showing the threading of the holes in the baseboard is a two-part sequence. This is part one, initially threading the holes. And this is part two, applying some super glue to the threaded hole. You don't apply the super glue to the hole first, you thread it, then you apply the super glue. You don't need much and you need to be really careful you don't get any spots of this on the baseboard itself. The super glue does not naturally run down the hole, so you have to help it out a little bit with a screwdriver point. In this clip, I'm threading the next hole in the baseboard in exactly the same way as you've just seen. And after extracting the tap from the hole, I use super glue once again, as shown here. Why am I using the super glue? Wood is quite a soft material. Even hard wood is not as strong as steel. That's why I thread the hole first, then I apply the super glue which runs down into the hole with a bit of help from the screwdriver. And this really toughens up the threads. The only problem is it's then more difficult to screw the bolt into the wood. Once you've applied the super glue to all the holes and spread it out using the screwdriver, you need to leave it for a considerable time to cure. This is the underside of the baseboard and as you can see, the drill bit broke through very well on every one of them. No splitting of the wood. And that is another reason why I didn't apply too much pressure to the drill bit. I let the drill bit do the cutting and it came through neatly. You've just seen me using a larger drill bit on the underside just to deburr the holes. Let some time elapse for the super glue to cure, and now comes the important part. I'm using the 4BA tap one more time to go through the holes. The tap is now cutting a mixture of wood and super glue. And as you thread the hole, you can see that what's coming out of it is a mixture of super glue and wood, not just sawdust as previously. If you're using steel screws, you can actually omit this because the steel screw will cut its own thread, but it will be very tight and more difficult to do. It's not advisable when using brass screws because these are often not strong enough, especially in the small sizes. I'm going to fasten the boiler to the baseboard using these small brass dome head screws, and I'm beveling the edges to make them fit into the holes more easily. The fit of these bolts in the baseboard holes really is very good. But it's worth remembering, whoever assembles this plant, because it's going to have to be dismantled to be posted, 
not to put too much pressure on the bolts. You do not want to shear them off, nor do you want to strip the thread that's in the wood. The bolts are a great fit into the wood in the baseboard. Now it's coated in super glue. And as you can see, there is no damage whatsoever to any of the slots in the heads of the bolts. To be honest, a wider screwdriver would be a better idea. But the next size up of screwdriver that I have is too big to fit the slots in the bolt head. I decided to use washers on the boiler and in fact the condenser which I'll be doing shortly. Sometimes washers look right and other times they don't. Generally speaking, on steam engine castings, in the full size, they were normally bolted together without using washers. Moving on to the next part, I now need to drill some 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter holes, and these are going to be to hold the condenser in place. I'll be using 6 BA bolts for these, so therefore I will use a 6 BA tap. These are the holes for the steam engine mounting. Same principle on all of the holes drill them, thread them, super glue them, let the super glue cure, and then re thread them. I'm using washers on the condenser mainly to stop the bolts from scratching the paint. This clip shows the finished layout with the exhaust piping fitted. I've used slightly thicker silicone rubber to go from the engine to the condenser and from the condenser to the chimney. The silicone rubber tubing that I used for the condensate drain was the stuff that was supplied with the kit, it's a bit thinner. I've included the image of the instruction leaflet just to make sure that I've connected it up the right way around. The two brass bolts that I temporarily used to fix the engine to the baseboard look terrible. For one reason, they are countersunk bolts and the holes in the lugs are not in the middle. So I'm definitely not going to use these. I'm going to use a pair of steel bolts, machine away the heads and use them as studs, but with a difference. Please continue watching the video. Using my small Warco M180 lathe, I'm quickly removing the bolt heads. What an edit, you couldn't even see the join. In a very short time, I end up with two studs. I clean up the ends that I've machined using a file. The other end of these bolts, which will be visible, are very beautifully domed, so it seemed a good idea to use them as they are. Here's a collection of 4BA fixings, you can see the studs in the foreground. What I need to do now is permanently fix a brass nut to each end of the studs at the domed end. Here, as always, I'm using far too much Loctite 603 and you have to be careful with this stuff. It really does remove paint very well. At this point, I'm well away from the baseboard and the engine. I allowed about 15 minutes for the Loctite to cure, then I screwed the studs in place using a nut spinner. I didn't use washers on purpose because the flats of the nuts don't make it quite as obvious that the holes are not drilled in the right place on the mountain lugs. The job is completed. All I need to do now is a second steam test to make sure everything works and that is the end of the series. I won't video the packaging and where I take it to the post office. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.